We've all been interested in K-beauty at some point. It has revolutionized both the makeup industry and the skincare industry in these past years. So today I wanted to take some time to talk to you a little bit about my experience with it, while I also show you my end of the week skincare routine. I can clearly remember the moment I decided to start using Cornier products on my face. I was in class and my teacher was talking about tissue regeneration and wood healing. And I remember I thought, oh, that's why Korean skincare is so effective. One second, let me go wash my face. Up until then, I didn't feel so inclined to try in it because it seemed like a hassle. <laughs> and I wasn't in a loving yourself mindset. <laughs> but that day, I left school so eager to find out more about what products to use and how to start taking care of my face. Okay, I actually exfoliated it while I was washing it. And then I washed it. I'm going to shave it because I haven't shaved it in a while. <laughs> So, that's the next step. Oh, actually, I usually apply toner before shaving because, I don't know, it's just personal preference. I like to moisturize the skin more after I, st after I shave it because I feel that if I apply toner first, my skin is not so dry. So, it doesn't hurt that much. <laughs> I have PCOS, so there are many things about my body I don't feel comfortable with. Especially the body hair. I was laughed at a lot growing up because of it. And certain situations made me wander away from my feminine side to protect myself. And back then I felt cool with it. I thought I was the coolest manly girl in the world. But that was the thing, I still wanted to be a girl. And be in touch with makeup and long hair. So I call myself a cool girl because terms like tomboy actually made me feel sad. I am a girl and I still wanted to be a girl. I was just scared. When I started doing Korean skincare, I began to religiously shave my face because I was expecting to magically turn into a porcelain beauty at some point. For many months, I thought I had a dirty face and the skincare will improve it if I continue using it long enough. I guess I was just desperate to feel feminine again because I even started researching wolf and makeup and following Pony Syndrome's makeup tutorials. The truth was I hadn't paid attention to my face before, so I didn't know it very well. And though I knew I had some freckles, I didn't realize that the dairy appearance was mostly freckles looking different because of redness and my veins showing through. I have a pretty transparent skin, so obviously I was not going to look like the references, but like myself, and I wasn't really happy about that then. It's taken me a lot to make peace with the things I don't like about myself. I want to make sure that if I ever undergo some procedure, I do it because I want it and not because I think I need it. So I don't feel sad later on about running away from who I was. Tough work, but it's allowed me to feel more comfortable in my own body and move away from my insecurities. Done. It's time to moisturize my skin. I don't think the inner healing work is done with my face though. I still would like to have flawless skin and be a person in beauty. But things like erasing my freckles make me really sad, so I'm still trying to find a middle point. But so far I've learned that pretty skin doesn't equal healthy skin, and that is helping me to see my face in a brighter light. I know there is a big statical factor in K-beauty in general, but as I lean more onto the self-care side, I'm using it as a tool to grow out of my fears and insecurities and to learn how to take better care of myself. I haven't gone too deep into K-beauty, but I'm trying to refine my style. So on my next video, I'll be inviting a friend to teach me the do's and don'ts of adapting Korean makeup to your face. So what do you think about K-beauty and skincare? Have you tried them before? Thank you for watching. See you next time.